Earlier, I spoke to Nadim Zahawi, the Minister for COVID-19 Vaccine Deployment. I began by asking him if the government was on track to meet its target of vaccinating 15 million people by the middle of February. I'm confident that uh, we will uh, hit the target uh, of making sure that we offer those four uh, top categories of the most vulnerable people uh, the vaccine. Uh, you've seen a, 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 a marked interest today. We almost hit 250,000 uh, uh, jabs in a single day. We publish data every day and that will continue uh, to improve uh, day on day. I also have a, you know, quite a good clear line of sight now of deliveries uh, through till uh, end February. So I'm pretty confident that uh, we will be able to meet that target. There were reports this week that you told MPs in a phone call, Tory MPs, you don't want other European countries to know how much we have because we're all competing for a finite supply of vaccine. Uh, but by even saying you're going to vaccine almost 15 million by middle of February, you're kind of giving the game away anyway, aren't you? No, I said we've got tens of millions coming through uh, in the next weeks and months. Um, uh, the, the, we've ordered 100 million of AstraZeneca and 40 million of, of uh, Pfizer vaccine. Uh, the, the thing that uh, I think would be wrong to do, and I said this, this to the select committee as well, is to, be, to, to sort of give a running commentary of, of uh, a forecast of every delivery. One, because it's uh, for, you know, for national security reasons, it's, it's a wrong thing to do. Secondly, you don't want to, to, to put pressure on the manufacturers because every country now obviously is looking for more supply. Are you worried that perhaps someone like Germany is about to hijack some of the vaccine supplies that are on our way to us? Are you really thinking that things are so acute and indeed desperate that that could happen? No, I, I wouldn't uh, 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 go uh, you know, uh, that far. I think uh, you know, the manufacturers, these are you know, great companies. But, uh, you know, obviously there is pressure on production. There's pressure on supply to other countries. I can tell you exactly how many we've ordered. What I didn't want to get into is when does each batch arrive? Uh, what I'm very happy to do, which I think information is our, our ally in this endeavour, is to publish daily data of how many people we've actually vaccinated. A poll this week revealed that 43% of Britons would happily be vaccinated between 6 a, midnight and 6am, with only 32% saying they wouldn't. Surely a 24-7 vaccination would help you meet that target. Is that not happening yet just simply because you don't have enough doses? Well, it's a really good question. So, one, we're going to pilot 24-7 um, vaccination just to see how the system can work. Where will you do the pilot and when for 24-7? So, the NHS is looking exactly how to do that. But what I'm saying to you is actually doing 24 hours a day when you have limited vaccine supply, wow. right, you, you want to focus your, your, your attention and every jab to the most... Uh, but the, 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 the most vulnerable group. You've said uh, that the priority group for phase two of the vaccination programme would be teachers, shop workers, policemen and policewomen. But it would be for the Joint Committee on Vaccinations and Immunisations to decide that. Would you be prepared and willing to override their advice if it means inoculating key workers who have risked so much for us so ready, so, uh, so, so, sorry, who have risked so much for us already? So the JCBI will look at the phase two uh, and, and will make their recommendation. My instinct is to say those who are in professions that are most likely to come into contact uh, with the virus uh, and the viral load in teachers, uh, policemen and women, shop workers, a number of different professions. My instinct is to say we must focus on them. The Prime Minister has made it very clear that the first thing he wants to do is make sure that schools are completely open. Let's talk briefly about care homes, because the week ending 10th January, with 35% more care homes affected in the previous week, as levels approach those seen in the first wave, how could this have happened again? Well, again, look, this, we, we've, we've put testing into care homes. Um, uh, and that has made a difference. But you're right. The reason I, I say to you, these are the most vulnerable uh, uh, people in our society. Why? You know, the reason I'm focusing all the effort of primary care to make sure every care home is vaccinated before the end of the month is because they're so vulnerable. And it's because this, this variant is so infectious. 
It is much more infectious. And my message to all your viewers is please, please, please stay at home. This virus loves social interactions. Yeah. Stay, stay at home is a key message, it's the government's key message. But this week, Newsnight has reported that rather than being non-compliant, it's not about being non-compliant, people are simply unable to quarantine. You know, we heard from care workers who said, I couldn't afford another two weeks like that. It would make me reluctant to self-isolate. We are the people that held the country up in the first wave, and now we're getting the doors shut on us. L listen to this statistic, uh, Nadim Zahawi. Liverpool City Council rejected 77% of applicants for the £500 payment. People cannot afford to stay at home. A lot of care workers are on minimum wage. Shouldn't you be doing more to help uh, low-paid workers? You know, for example, look at it in New York. People are paid to stay at home. People are given hotels when they live in small houses with other people and can't self-isolate. Is the, is the focus need, need to maybe change now? We need to actually refocus to help people stay at home rather than I mean they feel d desperate about breaking rules, but they can't afford to put food on the table. So the hardship payments are deliberately targeted at those who most need it. Um, they are, you know, that's the, their purpose for those who really, really do need it, um, who are on minimum wage that you describe. We also have made uh, 50 million pounds uh, and an additional, I think, 20 million about to go out to local government. Uh, as further discretionary payments uh, for those people that they they think may be outside of the uh, 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 the criteria that they still need the help, and so but we're if putting being more. Refused help. it. What do we do, Minister? If they're being refused it, seventy-seven percent. Other councils have similar figures. If they're being refused it, these people are desperate, and they're the people that we rely on the most. Don't you need to do more for them? Uh, look, you know, we're putting billions into both the economy and helping people through the welfare system, through making sure that housing, all the other um, uh, help that's there for people to help them get through this. This is, you know, it, it is tough. I, I don't you know, sort of, you know, uh, 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 deny at all how difficult this is for people, especially if you're on uh, uh, national living wage. But nevertheless, the hardship payments are deliberately targeted at those that most need it.